Hello to those of you online and uh, every time I'm away on a Sunday I try to provide uh, some teaching so that those of you who need your uh, weekly diet of teaching would be able to uh, continue to grow in the things of the Lord. Today as we consider His Word and as we consider um, all that the Lord has been doing, I realize that the Lord will be showing more visions and dreams to every one of you ever since Malaba and Mukave. So it will be good to touch a little bit about dreams and visions. As we look at dreams and visions in the Bible, let's look at this uh, little phrase here in the book of uh, Job, in the book of Job uh, chapter 33. A uh, verse that we have um, quoted before, but it's good to have a look at it and uh, see this uh, section here. In Job 33, there's a statement that is made, and uh, this is a little statement that says here about dreams in verse 14 onwards. It says, For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon man, while slumbering on their beds, they opens the ears of man and sees the instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Man is also chastened in Spain, etc. But this part here, where it talks about uh, dreams, is that God does speak. It looks like uh, there's a secondary uh, area in which God begins to uh, speak. And every one of us have had dreams. And of course, not every dream is necessary from the Lord. And we need to be able to flow with the Lord and understand what He's speaking to us and the ways He speaks to us. And as you consider dreams, we have a series about dreams and teaching about dreams and its interpretation. But as you consider dreams and visions, dreams and visions firstly in the Bible are very related, especially in the Old Testament. Dreams have been considered visions of the night. And of course, uh, that is when you, you are unconscious. And visions are that which you receive in your conscious state. In our modern world, people wrestle with the reality of the dreams because dreams seem so far-fetched from the physical reality of lives that people are living in. But yet, in the Bible, dreams have always been real and directly related to many of the physical events of the world. For example, in the Bible we have Joseph's dream. It predicts about how one day he was going to rise to a high position and uh, eventually it did, possibly if he was 17, 13 years later. And there were two dreams about that, about how he's going to rise into a certain position and above all his brothers even though at that time he was among the youngest uh, uh, besides Benjamin. <coughs> then we have Pharaoh's dream of the seven good years of prosperity followed by the seven years of famine. These are dreams that affect the reality of the world at that time and it physically took place. And what about the dreams of the butler and the baker, which was a direct prediction that in three days one of them would die, three days one of them would be restored. Butler got restored, Baker was sentenced to death. Or what about dreams in the New Testament, like uh, Matthew, where Joseph, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who is the husband of Mary, he was warned in a dream by angels. And he had several dreams. He has a dream to tell him to flee the land uh, it, because Herod was after baby Jesus. Then when he was in Egypt, he was told to that those who were after the life of Jesus have all died. Also it was time to return. Then when he returned, it also records that uh, 
he considered the region of Judea, but uh, the dream warned him to not go to the area and he ended up in Nazareth instead. Everything that was done, of course, fulfilled the word of God. And what about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts chapter 2, where Peter stood up and began to preach about the outpouring and says, according to Joel, that uh, when the Spirit comes out of all flesh, uh, old men shall dream dreams, young men shall see visions, and then uh, men servants, maid servants shall prophesy. These are all relating to the fact that in the Bible, dreams are considered serious events. And from time to time, there is a particular special dream that stands above all other dreams. The Bible did record every single dream that uh, Joseph had, or every single dream or vision that Daniel had, or every single dream that Joseph had had. <coughs> but the Bible does emphasize that there are dreams and visions that are very significant <coughs> and it pays us good to pay attention to these dreams and visions for they speak special messages and they have the element of uh, revelation of things to come, <coughs> of things in the future. We have um, many series uh, of teaching on dreams and out in the secular world you have people trying to understand the dreams too, to imagery and uh, <coughs> all these contexts. One of the keys to understanding visions and dreams is to be able to have enough keys to interpret the dreams or the visions. <coughs> dreams of course, and including visions, have a dimension in which there is a contextual aspect to it. So let's consider several points as we talk about dreams and visions because it's going to increase in our life and we need certain areas. Let's look at the general area. Number one, there's a contextual element to every dream which any interpreter of dreams and vision needs to pay attention to. One of those uh, let's examine it. Let's examine the dream in the book of Genesis of the butler and the baker. <coughs> in the dream of the butler and the baker, of which uh, they were both they both uh, sent to prison at the same time, <coughs> and um, <coughs> Joseph happened to be there. But they had strange dreams, and these are the dreams that were there. <coughs> The butler dreamed in his context this little dream in uh, Genesis chapter 40. He says uh, in verse 9, <coughs> Behold in my dream, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded. Its blossom shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Joseph interpreted that the branches, three branches represent three days. And that in three days, the butler will be restored back to his place and he will again handle Pharaoh's cup the normal way that he used to handle. <coughs> That's the interpretation saying in three days, he will be restored, he will be promoted. Sim look simple interpretation. Now let's look at the baker in chapter 42. When the baker saw that it was a good dream, the baker shared his dream in verse uh, 16. I also was in my dream and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost baskets were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree and the birds will eat your flesh from you. I mean, he was sad. He will be sadder by now knowing he got only three days to live. So these are two dreams given to two different people with two different professions. But the interpretation is similar that in three days 
an event will take place, one will be restored, one will die. Now as we look at this uh, interpretation of dreams, can you see the contextual aspect? The butler in his profession was always holding the cup. This is his daily life, his daily routine. He always holds the cup and he serves Pharaoh. He is acquainted with grapes and wine and uh, all the different uh, things that is related to the cup. Most likely, he used to press the grapes upon the cup and he used to make fresh juice for Pharaoh. He used to prepare all his drinking elements. After all, he was a baker. These are things that are from his daily life. The baker always baking bread and he handles a basket of bread and the bread will be put in baskets and they will be transported who knows it might actually be transported carried on the head too we do not know but these are events that a, a normal daily part of their individual professional life one butler and one baker but the revelation of three days was different to the butler, three days was the num the tree vine, the three branches of vine uh, that sprout. And to the baker, it was three white baskets. So three days are revealed differently to do different two different profession. This is an important law of interpretation, dream and vision. You say, does it affect visions too? Yes. Because uh, we are always seeing visions or dreams colored by our own cultural, professional context. Dreams and visions, God sometimes takes from what we are familiar with to reveal something to us. So God may reveal three days to you in a different way. If perhaps you are an accountant and you deal with accounts books all the time, who knows, you might see three accounting books. Or if someone is, um, uh, let's say, besides a butler, baker, lawyer, what other profession you can be, let's say perhaps you're a housewife. And uh, what do you do in the daily life? You might uh, be shopping. So you bring baskets of groceries back. And for you, you might see three grocery bags. Where normally you would shop one grocery bag, but you see three grocery bags. Isn't it interesting to consider the fact that there is a contextual aspect to imagery, to the way God revealed the three days. It is very important for us to understand that all dreams and visions will automatic, automatically be colored by our context and by our profession, by things that we are normally using all the time. So examining the imagery is one thing. So I know some people, they just, you know, buy a secular book. Oh, dream about bread. They examine what bread means. Oh, dream about wine. Examine what tree wine means. It is not good enough. It's not like a dictionary you could take uh, the each imagery means something. You need to first look at the colored context of the dreamer of dreams, the one who actually dream, and that color their context. God will take from that in order to send a message to us. What does the context speak? How do we recognize such a contextual element to so much imagery in dreams? Look at the professional context. Or, if it's not professional, and you could be a full-time housewife or full-time doing various things, volunteer service, look at what is your normal daily life, and that is a regular part of your context. Now, when God uses that part, you know that is from your own contextual understanding of that. So take that part out and, uh, and bring it forth and examine it. No interpreter of dream should just uh, interpret on your own context. You see, I have my own context. You have your own context as a dreamer of dream.
The skillful interpreter will not just have a book of vocabulary inside his heart and mind and say, okay, this means this, this means this, this means this. No. Before you could apply the imagery, you must remove the context. And even sometimes the context of dogs in the Bible representing religious people and uh, sheep or lamb represent people of God, which is a basic imagery from the Bible. What happens if you're a shepherd? And all your life you handle sheep. So sheep for you now means something else. And not just the church or the people of God. Or what happens if you're a dog breeder. And you breed dogs as a living. And you sell the dogs. Then when you dream of dogs. It cannot just be Bible imagery that the dogs represent uh, religious folks. Because now the dogs represent your working life every day. Can you see... There is what I call the, the personal general context of the dreamer themselves. In order to be skillful in interpreting dreams, we must first of all understand the context of the dreamer. Is a person a, a shepherd? Is a person a cook? Is a person a baker? Is a person a butler? Is a person a king? If the person is a leader, and uh, a person could be a herdsman, is a person a farmer who might dream about three rows of carrots? And um, we have to look at the context of the dreamer. So don't just jump into imagery. Right, so that's number one. Number two, from this passage here, numbers remain numbers. That is the lovely thing about dream. The number three still remains three. And they were in the context of the butler. You notice uh, that he dreamt that there was a vine and it produced three branches. For the baker... He dreamed that uh, there were three white baskets on his head. Three is still three. Watch for numbers in a dream. If there's one, it just means one. If there's two, it means two. Three, it means three and so forth. Numbers do not run. If you go to heaven right now, one plus one is still two. Three plus three is still six. Numbers are the most basic counting elements to everything. Remember when uh, Gabriel was talking to Daniel about the future of uh, the Middle Persian Empire. Let me look at the context for a while in the book of Daniel. And that would be around chapter 11. And uh, let's see, towards the end of chapter 11, close to chapter, f uh, close to chapter 12, uh, oh yes, correct, chapter 11. And angels know how to count, and there are the exact numbers that are here, let's look at these contacts, he says, in chapter 11, verse 1, Gabriel told Daniel, also in the first year of the Iris the meet, I even I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I will tell you the truth, Gabriel says. Behold, three more kings will arise in Persia. And the last one, which is a fourth, uh, there is Darius the meat plus three. So the last one, which is a fourth, shall be far richer than them all. By his strength, through his riches, he has stirred up against the realm of Greece. So he said that three more kings, there's this king now, there's three more kings. Numbers remain the same. So there, there, there's number one, then number two, number three, number four. Then he says number four, this is going to happen. See, numbers are very consistent. Mathematics still are exact. If you see 12, there are 12. When, um, when you see Joseph with his dream, he dreamed about him and his brothers. And uh, you see the number of she's in that time. Joseph's dream should be Genesis chapter 37. Let's look at the numbers here. And uh, this is his uh, interesting dream uh, before he was sold by his brothers. And then he says here in verse um, <coughs> 5, 
affair. Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So this is a dream. Please hear this dream which I have dreamt. There we were binding sheaves in a field. Behold, my sheaf arose and also stood uh, upright. And behold, your sheaf stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. He didn't say the number here, but he says uh, uh, there were this bundle of things that was gathered together. And we put it all stuck together and your, your one bowed down to mine. Of course, it makes the brothers angry because he's already unfairly treated well by his father, while the rest are not so fairly treated. Didn't say the number here, but already you notice the point one. The context of the dream, since, they, since they're always working, they're farmers and herdsmen, they're always working, farming, cutting things, putting to, things together. Joseph probably had helped before as a young young boy. He would help them gather it, tie the sheaves together, and sometimes the brothers tie, everyone tie, and they all have this bundle of sheaves. Then they would stack it up. You see, it comes from his daily life. The specific personal context of a person who dream and see vision is very, very important. Because this is where your soul adds the element of the context. Is is your physical life that is uh, uh, doing this uh, harvesting? Is your soul remembrance of the physical life? So they are always doing it. Same like the butler, he handles the wine, the grapes, the, the cup. The baker handles the baking of bread and the baskets. It is all contextual from their personal life. Always remember, it colors everything we receive. So let's read on. In a second dream, the, there's a number that comes out. And it says, look, I have another dream. And this time the sun, the moon and the eleven stars bound down to me in verse 9. Now these are the numbers. You have the sun, the moon, and of course we know that represents the father and mother, but 11 stars. Now, Joseph was together with his uh, brothers, with Joseph is 12. So the number is exact. It is 11. What else can the 11 talk about? There are exactly 11 other brothers besides Joseph. Numbers do not run. There is no failure in the mistakes of numbers. And remember, you cannot add subtract numbers in a dream any or how. The dreams are fixed in a numbering system and very precise. And one needs to remember that uh, uh, numbers do not change. It's exactly as it is dream. And uh, you cannot plus one, minus one. You might say, oh, he, he dreamed. If Joseph dreamed of ten stars, it will no more mean that the interpretation applies to his brothers because he has eleven other brothers. It has to be exactly eleven. So that is important to the law of interpretation. There were exactly three branches from the vine. There were exactly three baskets on the baker's head. No more, no less. And straight away, Joseph knows that that numbering represents the three days. That's important as a context to interpretation of dream. We really got two points here. First point is, when you hear a dream, understand the personal context of the dream that is colored by whoever dreams it. And we must also know that we might be colored in our interpretation. Because to us as a Christian, when uh, you hear wine straight away, you, it, you're colored. You say wine means Jesus, wine means something. So you bring your own contextual uh, uh, perversion or, or, or imagery into the context when the person might not be a Christian and the wine might be, mean something different to them. We are always thinking through our cultural context. We must, be, we must take ourselves out of the picture and see it clearly. Secondly, numbers are numbers and they are precise in a dream. If you, if you dream that you found exactly three coins, is exactly three coins. If you dream that you planted uh, three trees, is exactly three trees, not four. Mathematics remain constant and part of the important law of interpretation of dreams that is there. We have touched on other areas about um, the background, you know, or what a person is thinking of in a dream, so I will cover those areas. I'm trying to cover new material. And uh, we know that 
there is the area of uh, Nebuchadnezzar who who sees uh, and, and wonder what will happen after his empire and his thoughts generate a dream that he dreamt of the other empires that come. So that we already touched on before about uh, the background behind the dream. So that those we touched on. But I'm trying to bring uh, more specific uh, material because sometimes when I tr- teach interpretation and dream, uh, I don't actually have a book. I'm just teaching from experience in all the years of interpretation, dreams and vision and trying to find points here and there to train different people. So we are taught different things. But I need to teach some of these things again because there are more fine lines that we need to look at. And there are two points that I have covered in this first part of the message. And that is one is the uh, personal context of the dreamer and the imagery they use that come from their daily life. Please pay attention to that. Number two is the specification of mathematical numbers. It is precise. There is no playing around with the numbers. They must be very precise and precisely applied to the interpretation. And so you have to count exactly all these details and the numbers that are there. Praise the Lord. I'll continue the next part of this message in part 2 because uh, we record it here as clearly as we can and the maximum upload that we have is a limit of 2 gigs so being very clear uh, recording today it is going to take half an hour for uh, this section and the next half an hour or so in the next section so I'll see you in the next part of the record in the second half of this sermon God bless Hello, welcome to the second part of this message and um, we touched on two points in the previous part on uh, interpretation of dream and the reason we teach this series as, as you see is that there are more downloads and more dreams that God is going to give each one of you. Remember, Joseph might have many many dreams but there was these two particular dreams that were more important than any. So the Bible didn't record every single dream he had. And the same way, not every dream that you had is that important. But there were certain dreams that stand head and shoulders above the rest because they contain an element of the future and prediction, things that God has specially revealed to your life. And we touch on two contexts that is important, the dreamer's context, cultural, professional, work, work-life context will need to come in to part of the interpretation so that they can interpret a dream or vision accurately. Number two is mathematics in a dream. That the numbering, when it's revealed by God, is usually very precise. There's no hanky-panky or mucking around with the numbers. Do not add, do not subtract. Allow the dream to show the precision of the numbering. Whether it be 12, it be 10, uh, it's always precise. The same in a vision. Uh, the numbers and mathematics do not change. 7 is 7, 8 is 8, 10 is 10, 12 is 12. Uh, we must pay attention to the numbering system. Because when you interpret and it is against the true numbering system, let's say God is trying to review eight, uh, uh, about 8 people, and then uh, uh, in a context of certain things, there might be, let's say, uh, 12 people, then you cannot apply because it doesn't stand with a reality. It is important that the mathematics are precise and the numbers are important. So far, I've seen some interpretation of dreams and I notice that sometimes people ignore the numbers. For example, God may review uh, five, uh, a group of five people and then someone interpret, but when you count, actually there's six people. So the precision is too vague and it misses. Mathematics, as you know, is something that every accountant will tell you that if you add to the right side, you must add to the left side. It's very precise to balance the table. There's no mucking about with numbers. It's a very precise thing. So watch out for the mathematical context, uh, the ma- mathematical uh, system that is inside each dream. Thirdly, Let's read up some things about Daniel's uh, vision, which is like sometimes uh, a dream in a night. Daniel uh, is 12 chapters long, but it's divided into two sections. The first part, historical from chapter 1 to chapter uh, 6, 
and then from chapter 7 on is where he has his visions and some of these visions look like uh, terrifying dreams that he has and let's read them in chapter 7 verse 1 you see he mix between the description of a dream and a vision here it says here in chapter 7 verse 1 in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed so he had a dream and he probably also has some reputation of it as a vision you know how sometimes you get up from a dream you still are seeing those images running running through so he wrote down the dream so was it a dream or vision is actually a dream he actually has a fantastic terrifying dream and this is the context of his dream in, in verse 2 Daniel said remember this is a dream not a vision but he described the dream as a vision because that's the Old Testament star, visions of the night I saw in my vision by night behold the four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea each different from the other the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man a man's heart was given to it and suddenly another beast a second like a bear it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth and they said thus to it arise devour much flesh after this I looked and there was another like a leopard which had on its back four wings of a bird the beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it after this I saw in a night visions and this is actually a dream still behold a fourth beast deadly and terrible exceedingly strong a huge iron teeth it was devouring breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with speed it was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns and then the dream continued of the scene is four dreadful beasts I was considering the horns and there was another horn a little one so he looked at the horns that is on the head of this beast a little horn coming up among them before whom three of the first horns were plucked look at the precision mathematics exactly three by the roots so it pushed out the horns by the roots and there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking pompous words and then suddenly it looks like a vision but it's still a dream I watched two thrones were put in place and the engine of days was seated his garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool his throne was a fiery flame his wheels a burning fire a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him a thousand thousands ministered to him ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the court was seated the books were open I watched then because of the sound of pompous words and uh, which a horn was speaking I watched till the beast was slain the beast on which the sitting of the uh, where the horn seated upon to the head his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame as for the rest of the beast that their dominion taken away yet their lives are prolonged for a season and a time I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples nations languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed at this point Daniel woke up and then this was in his head is thinking 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 what could it mean and then you see in verse 15 I Daniel was grief in my spirit so he woke up within my body and the visions of my head troubled me so he got up and these dreams were circulating in his head and somewhere around he saw a vision and he came near to one of those angels that he saw in a vision and that's where when he woke up 
he must have been bothering about these things that he was dreaming. Then he entered into a vision where he saw this angel standing around him. And actually, from what I know, it is these angels that caused him to have the dream. They were trying to send a message. So part of the message was received while in a dream. Part of it was received in a vision and it was talking to the angel, which was easy because the angel uh, interpret uh, all these things uh, to him, the great bees and what they meant and uh, a lot of descriptions. Uh, and then he recorded all this account in his encounter with the angels. Wow, what a, what a fantastic uh, encounter that Daniel had. Can you see that this was a mixture between when he was dreaming, when he got up, and then he was thinking, and then the second half was given in interpretation. He had a dialogue with the angel, he, and, and he wrote down the account of all this thing. Uh, I have many times, sometimes when I have a dream that is from the Lord, you get up, you still see the angels and, and who have caused the dreams, and uh, who wants to dialogue with you about the dream. So on one side, you have pure imagery, which is precise. On the other side, you encounter with angels who speak and talk with you. That's a very interesting combination. This combination between dreams and visions is what we'll talk about. Long ago, when we had the uh, first seven thunders, he have open vision. That means you can see visions all the time. But the interesting thing, he also has dreams. And so the dreams are in a different area from the visions. And sometimes he tell me the dream or interpret the dream. And then there was one particular dream when he was in Korea. And he was seeing this dream. And then uh, in the dream, an uh, angel really says, time to wake up. Because uh, there's an email from me to him interpreting his first dream. And so we see the interplay between dream state and vision state when you're very deep in the spirit the two can interplay one to the other and uh, because they are what i call encounters in the spiritual realm when you're dreaming you're subconscious but when you're awake you're conscious and there's some dialogue taking place that's a very interesting combination but i notice uh, some interesting things it's not always true of each person I found when I analyzed the dreams of uh, one who has an open vision that when they were hindrances to receiving a message in a conscious mind, in a conscious mind, because of perhaps a psychological pre bias or a psychological blind spot that. When one is conscious, one cannot see the blind spot, one cannot see one's own weaknesses, one cannot see one's own bias. Because sometimes we say we are unbiased, but we are still biased. And um, uh, because when you are seeing a vision, your, your conscious mind is playing. Then I notice God would tend to reveal to this person using a dream because the person is knocked out. The conscious mind is asleep. Or, or quiet and only the subconscious is aware and the dream comes in its pure state waiting for interpretation and perhaps for some people who don't see visions and they only dream dreams the dream world is the world which they function in then occasionally God might have to use visions in order to speak more to the person so you got this reverse thing but I was very fascinated by the interplay between a dream state and a vision state and they both seem to have a relationship in in that context and um, I would say as I bring forth uh, this point here that in number three that when one when one sees a vision or hears anything in a conscious state we must realize that we are always seeing through our psychological context and bias and our cultural context which is in our subconscious and uh, is playing in the background they are the glasses that we wear we perceive the world for example all of us perceive the world differently 
all of us see different people differently. All of us see things slightly differently. What is causing that? Our own individual perspective in our conscious mind. But when we are asleep, the subconscious brings forth those things in its more uh, pure form that is there. So see the dialogue between the movement between uh, the dream state and the conscious state. The dream state, those things are just pure. And, uh, and that was before he mentioned about being troubled and being grieved in verse 15. So from verse 14 to verse 15 in Daniel 7, he woke up. And it was still troubling. And Daniel must be praying about all those things. And then he actually encountered in verse 16 an angel who told him all these things, who explained what the dream mean. And um, then he, he also desired to know, <coughs> in verse 19, <coughs> I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast because in his dream, the fourth beast was the most fascinating. Because remember, there were ten horns and then another little horn grew up from it. And then the little horn grew until it has eyes and a, and a mouth speaking various things. And he saw, uh, and in verse uh, 21, he said, I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints. And then as the angels speak, he was also seeing something. That means a, a vision within a vision. That can happen. And so in this, Third area, which we are going deeper into dreams, understanding dreams, dreams, vision, and revelations, is the interplay of dreams and visions. You could actually move from one to the other, and especially value, take, give value to, to dreams and vision. Uh, give value to the fact that sometimes when God finds it hard to speak to us in our conscious mind, he speaks to dreams, even though you are familiar with vision. And you have to pay attention to the dreams, because the dreams will be minus your conscious mind, your conscious bias that is there. So they would be more, quote unquote, if I can find, find this say, more pure in its form, although it will still have its imagery that is from your context and from your life. The other thing is, that while he was waking up, he, he was praying and thinking through those things. As he prayed and think through those things, he saw this angel and he began to dialogue with this angel. As he dialogued with the angel, at the same time he's seeing a sight vision of this horn making war with uh, the saints of God. So visions were taking place while he was having a dialogue. And that's very interesting. I have some very interesting experience where uh, I had a particular dream I got up and I saw the angel and I saw two angels, one angel and the next. And then, almost like Daniel, and I saw, and the angel knew that I saw them and I saw this angel talking to that angel. And this, like Daniel, you just got up from a dream and you're hearing what they are talking. And, and they allow you to hear what they're talking and sometimes they ignore you but sometimes they turn to you and they talk to you. And then while they talk to you because of the state of the vision, you still can see visions within visions. And that's a tremendous, uh, interesting download that is there. And, uh, and in the spiritual world, when you talk about something, the something is a reality and it appears in a vision form. How fascinating the spiritual world is. And uh, what is this uh, third element that is there? And that is to understand uh, first is to understand the personal, cultural, professional uh, context of a dreamer. Second is watch out for the accuracy, the mathematics in your interpretation. Num a number is still a number, precisely and exact. Thirdly, is what I call the modulation between dream and visions and visions and dream and visions of visions. And you can be in a dream, dreaming of a dream. These are what I call the interplay of dimensions of the spiritual realm which you begin to handle. As you begin to progress in the things of God, uh, you become aware of 
many depths of vision, many types of vision, many uh, level of vision that is some are like that says a lot some are just on a daily life some are less less important and they're just passing uh, things with a simple message we become more and more aware of the being conscious in the spirit and being conscious of a dream that you're dreaming that is from the Lord in other words, you're open to all dimensions of input that is happening. And I touch on this point because as we grow in visions, as we grow in dreams, moving between dreams and visions and visions and dreams is like one whole part. I have had before where I'm dreaming a dream and I got up and the dream continued but I mean my constant stage and I'm looking at the dream continuing and at other times uh, as I meditate I am seeing a, 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 a seeing a vision and then you nod off and you see a different part of the vision from a different context that is so fascinating to think that our own conscious or subconscious state does not affect the input that is happening to each one of us. Nevertheless, we need to be aware of the things that are happening in the dream. For example, um, like in Daniel, there are three things happening. One, the actual dream. Two, he was thinking, thinking, thinking. You see, he said visions of his head. And he says he was grieved. That means he was actually I know, imagine having a dream like his, like a nightmare, four, four creatures with the horns all growing, and you'd be one day, oh, you know, what, what is the context of the word? And uh, let's see the word here, the word grief that I want to mention. I, Daniel, was grieved in verse 18 in my spirit. The word for grief is a uh, word meaning to be distressed. <laughs> to be distressed in the sense of being pierced. In other words, it's, it's something that you cannot forget. You try to forget, cannot. And that is the word that I want to emphasize. When God actually works so completely in your life, conscious, subconscious and everything, there's an element where it echo inside your mind, it echo inside your heart, and the echoes are bouncing up and down, bouncing up and down. And my advice don't try to do too many things. Do like what Daniel do. So some of you are going to encounter this uh, tremendous impact of dreams and vision. Daniel's dreams and vision impact him physically. Such that at one point he even, you know, just so dazed that he felt very weak. So there is this echoing of the visions or dreams within you. And this is what Daniel put towards the end of the chapter. He says in verse 28, This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me and my con countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. So what Daniel did was as this thing bounced within him. I know some of you, when you get up, you, ha you, you have a dream. You remember, if you didn't write that down, after that you forget. Those are different categories of dreams. You see here in chapter one, chapter 7, verse 1, Daniel had a dream and vision that we said that he wrote down the dream telling the main facts. So, in this area, my advice is to learn to record them. Especially a dream of vision that echo within you. Especially a dream and vision that sort of trouble you, that stir your emotions, that stir your thought life. It stir his emotion, he felt grief. It stir his thought life because he keep thinking and thinking and it's a word. Here's the word grief followed by, by the word. And the word grief is mentioned. He felt so distressed by this dream. Oh, he cannot forget. He cannot forget. He just keep coming and seeing this thing uh, continuing in his life. But here's the thing uh, towards the end of chapter 7. He says here um, in chapter 7, uh, As for me, Daniel, my 
thoughts greatly troubled me. Now the word troubled here uh, is the word um, Aramaic word corresponding to terrify, to haste, uh, to stir within him. It's like uh, this ter- this dream. I keep seeing it. I turn everywhere. I keep seeing it. So he record it down. It really stir his mind. It really stir his emotions. And the only way he has to do is record down. But notice when he record, he record both the dream section and the vision section. And he record what he was feeling at that time. And I would say that each time you record your dreams or vision, please, if you can, record the details. Whatever detail, try not to miss out because if you miss out some details, whether in a mathematical thing or you notice know, each of the empire got exactly three ribs in the mouth and what they look like, all these decisions, remember to record as detailed as possible because sometimes you cannot interpret it yet. It, the interpretation might come later. And the marvelous thing about it is when a dream has its pureness from God. God will provide the interpretation. Hallelujah. See, in this dream, the angel interpreted for him and told him precisely what it means. So sometimes, if you have the graciousness not to interpret, because it's too complex to interpret, don't try to simplify a complex dream. It's a very complex dream. Look at his dream. He just recorded it. It was still troubling him. And the angel interpret for him. And he record down what he saw, what the angel said. He record precisely. And even after the dream part and the vision part, he was still in the days. And he write, he's still in the days, but he has recorded the account. Now think about it. Daniel at that time was still in the first empire. Everything was still in his future. He hasn't entered the Middle Persian Empire yet. We're still in the first empire, the Babylonian empire. I believe that it took him some time later to understand this vision. And even though he don't understand fully, because who can understand the ten horns in his time or the little horn that come up? Which today we know the three, three horns that got knocked down is uh, Germany, France and UK. He would, he, there's no way he could have known this thing. He only remembered the horns and what the horns did. At least he recalled what the horns did. So in this third point that I emphasize is the importance of recording when is a vision, when is a dream, and your state of mind. What was going on in your emotions? What's going on in your head? And then you record all these details down because in the future when it looks back, it was important to see what his state of mind, his state of emotions are. So I pray that God give you more dreams and some will make you more curious. Some might terrify you. There was, I remember a terrifying vision that I had and that was about the Antichrist conquering the world. And I was leading a group of people. We were on the highway and then at some point God said, get out of the highway in the, in the vision dream. And then after that, we see this monstrous thing, huge and tall, like a giant was passing by. Then we got back and... Um, that has never left me. So I know that that's the darkness that's coming upon the world and the world doesn't know. The world is not even aware of those things happening. And uh, so some things you don't, even that one, that particular dream with the highway and all this, there's some parts God hasn't fully interpreted for me yet. So I will wait for the interpretation. And my emphasis at that point, record it down especially if it's something from God. This thing that then has directly from God and some special things from God cannot be interpreted yet. Don't think that you got to give interpretation, you can straight away interpret. Hey, Daniel got to give an interpretation, he also cannot interpret. Because there are some things where the interpretation is hidden under its proper time. So as I teach dream and interpretation, I forgot to mention this point which I want to emphasize. Look at the complexity of the dream. And remember this, some dreams are not supposed to be interpreted. Some visions are not supposed to be interpreted until its proper time. That is an important point. Because if you try to squeeze in an interpretation into something that God says no interpretation yet because the time has not yet come, then you might be led into a totally wrong direction of the dream or the vision. 
So for now, remember these three points. Enjoy your your time on this Sunday and be blessed. First, the personal, cultural, professional context of the dream of dream. Second, the mathematics involved are always precise. Third, you could move between visions and dreams and see a vision within a vision, a dream within a dream. Record them down as you mentioned. Don't generalize. And keep an account. And then also record down what your feelings are and what your thought flow is like. Because your thought flow might not be the correct flow either, but you record it down. But the most important third point is some interpretations have its own time where you cannot interpret even if you are like Daniel ten times wiser with a gift of interpretation dream you still cannot interpret please do not think that just because God has given you interpretation of dreams or vision that you can just interpret it sometimes when I look at something I say okay I cannot interpret because I think this interpretation has to be at a future time you just have to admit it if you're not willing to admit it, you squeeze all the wrong interpretation into the dream of vision. So I pray this bless you, and I pray that most of all, we know this one thing. God will always speak His word. When His word comes in clearly, it comes in clearly. We don't have to beat about the bush. But let's the, let the Lord work through our lives. And because the seven thunders details and many other revelations are coming and I'm saying this word and teaching this because of this many of the things that you began to grow close with God to receive cannot be interpreted until its proper time it's given only to be recorded and sometimes the interpretation belongs to a totally different timeline and to a totally different person Sometimes God divides between the person receiving and another person receiving it and interpreting it. We must be aware. We are all instruments of God. We are not Mr. Knowing All. We are not Mr. Interpreter of everything. There's no such thing. We all know in part. We prophesy in part. We all dream in parts. We all see visions in part. Most important thing is that the Holy Spirit in its proper time will always give the context and the interpretation. The Lord bless you, the Lord strengthen you, and we see you on this next coming Thursday Bible study, and we continue the book of Revelations. God bless you. Father, I pray you give to all your people abundance of dreams, visions, and encounters in the Spirit so that the spiritual dimension is as easily available as the natural dimension. And we walk in two realms. We walk in heaven, we live on earth. Let it be so to your people. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name.